Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is not your ordinary PC gaming monitor because it's 4K, 144Hz, but also HDMI 2.1. So if you've got one of these snazzy new consoles, then it also doubles as a bloody good console gaming monitor, which is not something you see very often. And while arguably TVs are still a better option, particularly for HDR, and also they're a whole lot bigger, that is one of the issues. If you want something that also works well with your PC and can sit on your desk without completely destroying your eyesight, then this is definitely worth considering. So this is the ASUS Tough Gaming VG28U, and it's one of just a handful of monitors sporting one of these swanky new 2.1 ports, two of them in fact, along with a couple of normal HDMI 2.0s and a DisplayPort 1.4. So this is just as much for the PC Master Race as the uh, console Master Race. And if you do find this video helpful, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. Okay, let's talk specs. And it makes a good first impression because we're getting 4K at 144Hz via DisplayPort or 120Hz via HDMI 2.1. We also get a great looking IPS panel, fast pixel response, and AMD FreeSync Premium and G-Sync compatible adaptive sync tech. But at £700, or about $750, you are paying a bit of a premium for that HDMI 2.1, as there are better quality panels out there for less money. Now this isn't your only option when it comes to 2.1 monitors, but it is the only one, right now at least, that claims uh, to support fully uncompressed 10-bit 444 chroma color. And without getting too much into the weeds here, because this can get very complicated and also very boring quite quickly, but in theory, this means you're getting more true to life colors on PC and Xbox, uh, because actually the PS5 is limited to 422 color, but the difference between them, you really can't tell. To be honest, it's the panel quality and the color accuracy that really determines how good this screen is. And the good news is that color accuracy is actually pretty high for a gaming display like this, it's not professional level, but it's great for most apps, and even photo and video editing. And in my tests, ASUS's own claim of 90% coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut is pretty close, which is impressive. And don't forget that this is a full 4K resolution, and with this 28-inch screen size, it means whether you're console gaming or using a PC, everything is super sharp and crisp. And paired with that 120 or 144Hz refresh rate, everything's buttery smooth as well. The thing is though, while there are a handful of PS5 and Series X games that support 4K at 120, usually it's one or the other. But where we do get high refresh rates, it makes console gaming feel a lot more like PC gaming. Having said that, there are some advantages to the consoles. Uh, for example, we get an automatic boost up to 60 or 120 hertz, uh, thanks to game boost and FPS boost on the PS5 and the Xbox. However, from a purely PC gaming perspective, I think there are better options out there for less money. And realistically, 4K is still a bit overkill, especially at 28 inches, where unless you're sort of right here, I don't think you're fully appreciating that full uh, sort of higher pixel print density. But the issue is 4K just destroys your frame rate in games. I mean, I'm getting 60 FPS now uh, without ray tracing Cyberpunk on a 3090. So you're not taking advantage of that high refresh rate unless you're playing older, less demanding games. So really, I think the sweet spot for a PC gaming monitor is Quad HD 144 or 240, not 4K. But on the other hand, you can always reduce the resolution if you want, although it won't be quite as uh, good as native. And you do have the benefit of being able to run these consoles at full 4K. But regardless of how you use your monitor, one of my biggest issues with this Tuff is the HDR performance. It's rated for Display HDR 400, which is the entry-level Visa standard for HDR, and it means it has to exceed at least 400 nits of brightness, which it does, I measured around 520. So while it is displaying HDR content correctly, arguably it's nowhere near bright enough for a proper HDR experience. Contrast performance also isn't fantastic, so blacks can sometimes appear greyish, and we do get a little bit of blooming. I think given the price, as I say around £700, I was expecting a little bit better. Having said that, SDR performance was good, even though it's a little bit dimmer at around 350 nits, which is just bright enough to show off the punchy colours, and while we're not talking mini LED, OLED or even VA panel levels of contrast, it's not bad and there's only minimal IPS glow. More impressive though is the pixel response, because ASUS claims just one millisecond grey to grey response time, which is what you get in the fastest of the five overdrive modes. And while I did see some noticeable inverse ghosting on the higher setting, knocking it back a couple of levels still gave me a fast pixel response, and also less pixel overshoot around fast moving objects. 
Now design-wise, it's your pretty typical gaming monitor from ASUS. There's nothing really that interesting about it. I like the fact that we have nice flush bezels, except for this slightly chunkier chin at the bottom. But overall, it looks and feels a little bit plasticky, and there's a distinct lack of the usual RGB nonsense, usually reserved for their top-of-the-line ROG products. We do get a ton of flexibility, though. Loads of tilt and rotation, including being able to put it into full portrait mode, and you can even bring it right down to almost desk level, and there's barely any wobble. The on-screen display is nice and easy to use. Uh, we have this little uh, joystick at the back with a few buttons, and there's the usual array of options for you to have a tinker with. So the big question, should you buy it? Well, it's sharp, it's got fast pixel response times, it's pretty color accurate, uh, we're not getting any fancy OLED or mini LED levels of color or contrast here, but for an IPS, it does a good job. And also, if you are a console gamer, then having HDMI 2.1, while not strictly necessary, and actually I made a whole video talking about whether it's worth buying a 2.1 monitor, which I'll uh, leave a link to at the end of the video, that's definitely worth watching because you don't need one right now, but it certainly does make it more future-proof, and there are a few advantages to it beyond uh, just having the high refresh at 4K. So outside of using a 4K HDR TV, which would still probably be a better bet for these consoles, if you do want a monitor that fits on your desk, but you can also use it with your PC and also maybe do some work on, then this is a really good option. And while it certainly isn't cheap, it is one of the more affordable 2.1 monitors. And of course it has that secret weapon of the 444 10-bit color. The only issues really is that slightly iffy HDR performance, it just doesn't get quite bright enough for that proper HDR experience. Also, I kind of wish we had a 32 inch option, which I appreciate would reduce the PPI so it's not quite as sharp as this, but I think 4K at 32 inches is a much more reasonable size. And of course, this does have some competition. You've got Acer's XV28 2KV, uh, and also Gigabyte's Aorus FV43U, which obviously is a lot bigger. And if money is no object, then the ASUS ProArt 32-inch display is fantastic if you want pro levels of color accuracy with a nice 4K 120Hz screen. But for me, the best TV slash monitor slash display, whatever you want to call it, for a console is probably the LG 48-inch C1, which will cost you about a grand or so. The HDR experience is far better, you get true blacks because it's OLED, also 120Hz, also HDMI 2.1, and also actually faster pixel response times. Although it is pretty big for a desk, believe me, I've tried. So I'm crossing my fingers for that 42-inch version, which LG teased last year. But what do you reckon? Would this be a good fit for your gaming setup right now? Or, well, just a bit of a waste of money? Let me know what you think in the comments, and also if you've got any questions at all. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will leave a link to this below if you want to check it out, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.